Hello, and welcome to 30 Minutes. I'm Rick Anthony. I don't know about you, but I've never been a shutterbug, the kind of person who has to have expensive cameras, multiple lenses slung around my neck to capture images of my kids or grandkids or now my great-grandkids for posterity. The cameras I've received as gifts are somewhere in a closet uh, gathering dust. They were well intended for, in the hope that I would be motivated to learn how to use them. That never happened. Uh, they uh, are also somewhat reminiscent of some bad experiences, including that horrible trip to Greece. Of course, the smartphone has made all of us skilled photographers. I have hundreds of pictures of my kids, my grandkids, places, things. And if I really knew what I was doing with the editing apps that are available today, I could make those pictures into prize winners worth framing. My guest today makes a bold claim. Nick Kelch says that anybody can take great pictures using a smartphone. They don't need the stuff that is slung around your neck. Nick is a professional photographer, author, speaker, and trainer in the use of today's idiot-proof technology to produce photographs any of us would be proud of. Welcome, Nick, to 30 Minutes. Thank you for having me. I appreciate delighted it. delighted to have you here. I, I met Nick, oh, I don't know, about a month or so ago uh, through a mutual friend. And it, it was just a delight meeting him and learning so much about what this device can do. Uh, he showed me even with my humble, I think I have a six. You have, yours is humble. Yeah. Uh, That's an iPhone 6. Okay. You didn't have to say that. I mean, it, I know it's humble. You didn't have to verify it. But it's, it's, a, it's got 12 cylinders. I only need it three. Does. But you showed me some things with this thing that I, absolutely amazed me that even an idiot like me could, could do. I read a story recently that said, go update your old iPhone because the, uh, the most recent update is incredible and like turns that up into a high octane vehicle. Right. Yeah. Uh, I still wouldn't know what to do with well, it. That's, 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 that that is a problem, but maybe we can deal with that today. Okay. <laughs> Over the years, I've worked with dozens of photographers, professional photographers. Some were really good. Most of them weren't. They were the stand them up, shoot them down variety, publicity shots, things of that kind. What, what makes, what is the difference between a really good photographer, is it the equipment or is it the person using the equipment, it, or is the answer yes? It, the answer is it's the heart of the person who's using mm -hmm. the equipment. You've got to have a big heart to be a photographer. The, the best photographers are always bringing their art to whatever situation they're photographing, even a simple corporate headshot. When I look through my camera, I always ask myself, what am I trying to say? And uh, it has to do with heart. It, I, you know, it's like when a writer writes an email, they put their heart into it. Well, you're using heart as a mm -hmm. metaphor, but mm -hmm. is it more a sense of, well, there is, of what you're trying to you capture? Know, it, experience and practice yeah. teaches you how to see things simply and appreciate what will uh, convey your heart to your viewer's yeah. eyes. You know, I, I can't pretend like there's not practice involved, but... Um, it's a, in an attention to detail and keeping things simple, and we can talk about you know what. It so, means. if you were going to take a picture of yes. that pen, yes, yes. Uh, if how, I were going to take how a would picture, you see it differently? If I were going to photograph this pen right here, right now, the yes. first thing I would do is eliminate your piece of paper. I would get your phone out okay. of the way. I would simplify the background. Right now, from my perspective, it's a thousand times better. And then I would start to play around with lighting in here. Lighting is so important, so important. If I could give a gift to all of your viewers today, it would be an appreciation of lighting because mm -hmm. that is what just about every good photograph has is like some decent lighting. But I've, I've made a drastic improvement here by eliminating distractions from the background. That was my first step, mm -hmm. to photograph your pen. Then what? <laughs> <laughs> then I would probably photograph it with my iPhone. You're right. And I would probably edit the picture right here on my iPhone and send it to you, uh, airdrop it to you. Well, but to the, to the point, yeah. because I saw you do this before. Okay. Y you might do a long shot of the pen and then crop it and uh, begin to manipulate uh, the image. That is, is that correct? Uh, that's a possibility. Rather but than on, take a close-up? But close honestly, up? I try to shoot my photographs. I close. crop them with the camera. I think mm. most good photographers do that. I've got, I have a specific vision right now. You know, I like the curve of the yeah. little loopy-doop on here. 
and I'll get in close and maybe try to make that look like a piece of uh, okay. some kind of art. Is, is that a technical term? That loopy doop. Loopy doop. Yeah. yeah. You made that. Up. <laughs> I, uh, according to what I read, uh, you decided at age 15 that you wanted to become a professional photographer. What what was the the situation or the couple incidents? things happened? We moved into the house on Second Street and. Uh, the guy who lived there before us had left all of his darkroom equipment there. Uh, my dad had been a pretty darn good photographer, bringing back a Leica camera from World War II, so we had a decent camera in the house. And then, in, when I was in the ninth grade science class, the local newspaper photographer, Fargo, North Dakota, the Fargo Forum, he came and lectured our class about photography. He photographed the class at the beginning of his 45-minute lecture, and put the film into a light tight tank and for the course of the 45 minutes he developed the film talked mm -hmm. about photography developed the film and at the end he pulled out this wet roll of film and there were like 12 frames of my class on it and i said to myself i think i've got all that stuff at home that i could do this with and i talked to him afterwards um he was a he, he became a friend for life mm -hmm. i was i visited him on in hospice when he died mm. and that that you know, collision of uh, factors made me a photographer. And, and, and I, if I do say so myself, I was pretty good right out of the blocks. And I think, I've talked to people about this, I, I, I'm as ADD as you can possibly get, okay? <laughs> I mean, I, <laughs> and I've had experts tell me, you have absolutely the most perfect job for somebody with ADD. It's visual, it's mechanical, yeah. you get to go outside, you're not sitting at a desk all the time. Any, we could do a whole episode about ADD and photography. Okay, <laughs> so you went to college. Well, I, I, I attended the University of Missouri School and of And majored journalism. in? Journalism, photojournalism. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then ended up working for newspapers. I have had lots of photographs published in lots of different magazines around the world. I've written and or photographed nine books, many of them for amateur photographers. And you mentioned Oprah? I was on Oprah it, twice, the Today Show three why? times. Why? Why? Photographing babies. Uh, I did a book called Naked Babies with the Pulitzer Prize winner Anna Quindland. She's like a hero of mine, but I cold called her. Mm -hmm. And she said, I absolutely can't do it. I said, will you just look at some photographs? And she said, okay, send me some photographs. I got off the phone and it dawned on me, I hadn't even mentioned that they were pictures of babies. I was on the phone with her for a minute. The next day I got an email from her that said, why didn't you tell me these were pictures of babies? Of course I have to do this project. Mm -hmm. And we did two books together. But, but the picture, the, when you say pictures of babies, what comes to mind is what, yeah. you know what I'm talking about. There is the naked little infant on a rug or a bare rug or something like that. Isn't that the quintessential baby that is, picture? That is sort of the quintessential uh, uh, amateur version of yes. a baby photograph. What I did was I had, had a couple, the name of the book is Naked Babies. There is nothing man-made in the photograph unless you count a baby. There's no clothing Mm -hmm. in, in, in the book. Uh, so it's like white backgrounds. Babies in white backgrounds in a studio. And I was trying to make art. And Anna, when the book was coming out, she goes, Nick, we were going on the, t on the uh, Today Show, and she said, prepare yourself to tell people how you photographed, what you learned about photographing babies. And I said, Anna, that's an, I'm, I'm an artist, right? I tried to, tried to take the high road. And she said, Nick, I don't care what you think. People are going to ask you about this. And of course, you know, <laughs> Katie Couric, the first words out of her, mop, her mouth were, you know. So I sat down and wrote a, uh, 17 tips, what I photo learned about photographing babies. It was published in like 270 newspapers, when mm -hmm. not on the Associated Press. And a publisher in New York called me and said, you want to write a book about photographing babies? This was like the farthest thing from my photographic dream. Mm -hmm. And I have, and I somehow came, became this photo tips guy. And, and I've told people how to photograph babies, their families, fireworks, Halloween's coming up, uh, yeah. Christmas. And for some reason, I take such satisfaction out of teaching people how to do this. I was always the professional photographer that if I saw somebody fumbling around at the, at the uh, base of the art museum steps mm -hmm. with their camera and they clearly didn't know what they were doing, I would walk up to them and say, 
you need help here because you look like you're getting ready to take a really bad <laughs> photograph. And I would help him. Anyway, I don't know why. In addition to babies, you shot uh, more than a few celebrities in your day. I have. When I, I worked at the Philadelphia Inquirer, I was sort of the celebrity photographer for a, about a year. I, a couple of my celebrity stories. Um, I was a, a, assigned to photograph An Angelo Dundee, who was Muhammad Ali's mm -hmm. manager. He's like a, a legend in his own right. So they sent me to this hotel I at 11 o'clock. I show up at the hotel. I walk into the lobby with all my cameras hanging around my neck, and a guy in a suit walks up to me and he goes, are you from the Inquirer? And I said, yes, I am. And he said, he's up on the seventh floor. Okay, so I go to the seventh floor and I get off the elevator and there are two more guys at the elevator door in suits, and they said, are you from the Inquirer? Yeah, he's down in room two, two you know, 720, whatever. So I go down there and there's a guy at the door, you're from the Inquirer, yeah. He opens the door, and there sitting, there sits uh, Jimmy Carter, the <laughs> ex-president. He had just been defeated. Uh huh. Uh, he had just lost the election, uh -huh. so that's how long ago this was. And I looked at Jimmy Carter and I said, I'm looking for Angelo Dundee. <laughs> <laughs> and Jimmy Carter looked at the Secret Service man and said, <laughs> What's going on? And they quick ushered me out of the room and closed the door. Okay, that's, that's one of my slips. But did you get the shot? I of... did not. No, you didn't? I, no, I wasn't. No, I, I was ushered. This, I, these were like secrets. I was as flabbergasted as he was, you know. But was it would have been a good picture. Wasn't I, your Ali, instincts are good wasn't Ali in, the, in the hotel? No, 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 not Ali. Angelo Dundee. Oh, Angelo. Okay. Angelo Dundee. So I was in the wrong room. There were two, okay. in, two assignments mm. at, the, at the Inquirer so for the what, Inquirer that How day. did you explain so, that when you went back to the desk? They were like, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> the other one was, uh, so the celebrity thing. I went to the Four Seasons Hotel and I was to photograph um, Jim Henson and Frank Oz. They were the two guys who invented the Muppets. Mm -hmm. And they were like creative gods. I mean, the, the Muppet yes. show was hilarious. And I went into this room, and they were the two nicest guys that I've, you could possibly meet. Th and Jim was... Henson said to me, he said, you got 45 minutes. We will do whatever you want us to do. And I was like... <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you know, they're like throwing down the gauntlet, and they're both looking at uh -huh. me, just tell us what to do. You know, these two famous guys. And I think I did something silly, like had them sit in the bathtub or something uh -huh. horrible that I'm ashamed of. And I still, to this day, <laughs> I still, to this day, I go blank when somebody says, just tell us what you want us to do. And I'm flashing back to Jim Henson, you know, looking at me. But he was a great guy. Did, did you envision, when you started, that in addition to being a world-class photographer, which you are, and, and you've been recognized for the work you do and have done, uh, that you would someday be a teacher as well. You have a no. workshop series that yeah, you do. Yeah, I do workshops. I just did a workshop in Santa Fe last week. We have one coming up in Philadelphia at the end of November. And, and what's the essence of that? The essence is three and a half days of I will make you a better photographer. Using this? Uh, I do. A, or that? I, I do a uh, little, you know, let's do a 90-minute break yeah. about the, you know, the smartphone. Absolutely. And everybody says fantastic. You know, everybody wants to know how to shoot better pictures with their smartphone. And I meet very few people, advanced amateur photographers, very few of them know all the uh, tricks, I, I tricks didn't. of the trade. Yeah. I, I had no idea there was an app that could do the magic yeah. that you yeah. do with yeah. the phone. No, I pre and they don't either. Yeah. And um, it's, you know, I can see, we're in a very interesting place in, in camera history. Like, where are we? I mean. Does this, does this camera take a better picture than this camera? Well, define better. Is this, this camera's not nearly as accessible as mm -hmm. this one. I have this one with me all the time, so isn't the better camera the one that takes pictures when you need a camera to take pictures? On the other one, uh, on the other hand, this one still does have higher resolution. I own seven lenses for this body. Mm -hmm. I can change lenses. It puts me, you know, if I'm really serious, it, allows me to do things this camera can't. I have three sons. I do almost all of my family photography with this camera. Mm -hmm. uh, um, nobody can tell the difference. Has that become your specialty? What I mean, family photography? I would have to say it has uh, who been. I, I did a nature book too. I love photographing nature. I've been sort of feeling midlife or more later than midlife guilt that I'm not out photographing more nature. Uh, I, I need to get back to nature. But I, I illustrated a Rachel Carson book called The Sense of Wonder. That's another mm -hmm. yeah. and did it, what did it. What did it win? 
An award? He didn't win anything. Didn't win I, it. I, well, not that I know, but um, <laughs> it, that was about 15 years ago, and it's still in all of the national park bookstores. Uh, it's called the sense of. Are, are you still considered one of the top 100 photographers in the world? <laughs> you you did have that designation uh, on the covers of the books that I worked on. Yes, um, it depends on who you ask, I suppose. <laughs> I'm Seems asking you. <laughs> <laughs> you may be a little biased. Uh, yeah, um, <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, I have an older phone than you do, yes. and a smaller phone than you. Yes. Do. Okay. okay. Uh, is, is that phone that much better? This is a six, I think. I don't know what you Well, that's a really good question because, you know, people think, should I buy an iPhone 10? I haven't said, you know, I have an iPhone 6. Should I buy an iPhone 10? I would not say that you should upgrade that phone to this phone just for the camera. No. Um, there are other things that this particular unit does that yours doesn't do that are pretty cool. This one has facial recognition for passwords, mm -hmm. unrelated to photography, mm -hmm. but just for the camera, this is a pretty spectacular camera. And I've, you know, you showed me what you photograph. I'm not going to make fun of your photography, <laughs> but I mean, if you, know, you just if, did. You, if you gave me that camera, yes. I can walk around this block and come back in 20 minutes and I'm pretty sure you would say, wow, you can do that with my camera. Uh -huh. So I think you're probably is, is, not is, taking advantage of it. Is this camera, the smartphone, yes. better for black and white or color, no. or does it make a difference? It doesn't matter. Do you have a preference? Well, <laughs> I, you know, as a kid, I started photographing all black and white. The darkroom was all black and white. Newspapers are all black and white. So I've grown up black and white. Mm -hmm. uh, I have people I went to high school with at the high school reunion. They come up to me and say, hey, mm -hmm. did you ever buy a camera that shoots color film? And, I, and you know, I, we're way past that now. Um, people that I teach in my courses, it is a running gag that Nick loves black and white. And yet, when I say, maybe we should convert that picture to black and white and see what it looks like, they go, oh, wow, that is beautiful. Yeah. That is beautiful. Is there a particular shot that you've taken that is either framed or otherwise is displayed prominently in your home or some other public place? The picture that probably one, one made that me the most proud of for okay, whatever reason. There is one. It's um, the picture that made uh, uh, the cover of a day in the life of China. It was a big deal when China let in. I think it was 200 photographers. There were several of my childhood idols. You know, I, I actually had childhood idols that were photographers when mm. I was 15 years old, but there were several of them there. And uh, it was a very, very competitive atmosphere. And I got the cover of the book. And the picture that made the cover of the book is a single baby. I went into a hospital and there was a baby that had, was two hours old. And it's all wrapped up in these swaddling clothes with Chinese words written on the on, mm -hmm. the, on the blanket, the, the the swaddle, and the sheet behind it had the Chinese words printed too. I later found out mm -hmm. that those were so that people wouldn't steal the sheets. But regardless, mm -hmm. it was a picture of one baby, and I got this call from the editor of the book, and he goes, "Kelsh, congratulations, man! You got the cover of the book." We saw that photograph of one baby and we flipped out because China is a country of billions of people and they wanted one mm -hmm. little tiny baby on the cover. And there were all kinds of political things about you could only have one baby when you were uh, a, a Chinese citizens. Anyway, I was literally standing on my desk jumping up mm -hmm. and down cheering because my childhood idols yeah. had not... It's a great story. Yeah. You've had... Um an interesting, somewhat eclectic yeah. life as well as yeah. a career. Yeah. Uh, the, the, going back to the workshops, I think you told me uh, the first time we met that most of the attendees, the subscribers, yep. yes. are older women. Is well, that older is your word. Uh, um, more mature women. <laughs> yeah, they're like 55 or something. Oh, I mean, it's not unusual. My God, I they're, know. They're I know. young. Yes, uh, yes, I know. By my standards, uh, they're young. I understand. Um, uh, they, uh, uh, they have grandchildren. A lot of them have, I would mm. say half of them have grandchildren. And it's not just women, it's men too. But it's, um, it's not a lot of 22-year-olds, uh, mm -hmm. although we've had those for sure. It's people who have some, they've sort of rediscovered photography after they've had their own kids and now they've got grandkids. I have found that grandparents are this huge photography yes market yep. and that grandparents when you teach them how to use this phone uh, they 
sort of ask themselves, why am mm -hmm. I carrying this yeah. around? You know, no, let's just say it out loud. Nobody's getting any older around here. Nobody's getting, nobody's knees are getting any better. And the ability to like hang this up or give this to your grandson. You, you don't take say, that. I'm going to use this. You don't take that to Disney World. No, you don't. No, you, you I, take this to yeah, Disney World. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, with the grandkids. Yeah, yeah. absolutely, totally. Yeah. Uh, what is the future of the the the, the brands, the camera manufacturers? It's, uh, it's interesting that you ask that because I was at a conference six months ago and there was a MIT. Uh, researcher there and this guy has been around he's about my age he's been around the development of the digital camera from day one sort of came out of MIT mm -hmm. the, the, and <clears throat> I took him aside afterwards and I said when is this going to be the only camera that serious amateur photographers want and he said I actually think that's still a ways off and he, he said 10 years mm -hmm which shocked me, I thought he was gonna say two years. And then he said, well, let me just retract that because if I put this camera into the hands of a serious world-class photographer, he would blow your eyeballs away, mm -hmm. right? Okay, so there's that. Um, he also said that these cameras are quickly becoming dinosaurs. And that he thought that Nikon would be unrecognizable as a, com a company if not out of business in three years. And that Canon would be still around, but only because they make and sell printers. Mm -hmm. That other companies, Sony, Panasonic, uh, are like killing Nikon mm -hmm. and Canon, which have been the classic, mm -hmm. you know, uh, yeah. journalist. You know, on the other hand, if you look around the uh, sidelines at the, at the Super Bowl, it's all Nikons and Canons still. But those are the hardcore, I mean, mm -hmm. they, they don't mind that they're carrying around a John Deere tractor on a stick, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um... <laughs> I, I told you when I, again, first met you and you told me your story and then I saw some of your work and your, your mantra is keep it simple. Yes, absolutely. Keep it absolutely simple. Yes, absolutely. But that reminded me of the guy who had been on PBS television, the artist, uh -huh, uh -huh. Barb Ross, mm -hmm. I think yes. his name was. Yeah who became an icon yes. and didn't quite paint by the numbers, but it was close. I mean, was every it? picture okay. was essentially the same, the same uh -huh, elements, uh -huh, uh -huh, and he uh -huh. finished the canvas in 30 minutes. Uh -huh, right. uh -huh. uh, is, do you aspire to become I, uh, do the, I just, the, the you Bob know, Ross of photography? That sounds wonderful to me. Uh, to be perfectly honest with you, um, I really think that I can help a lot of people take better pictures, and probably with this camera, mm -hmm. And if you, uh, you know, if you start to understand what this camera can do, you're going, you're going to get yourself all turned on to photography. Um, I do a, little, I do a webinar. One little lesson I do. I have a thing called the world's greatest photo tip, and I, what my goal is to try and get people to shoot one photograph they love and be inspired to advance. And I'll cut right to the chase. My world's greatest photo tip is this: shoot someone you love. Start with someone you love, because you're going to be inspired to take a beautiful, mm -hmm. someone you love, close up, get in closer than you've ever gotten before. Uh, you know, I know people who, when they're going to, if they were going to take a picture yes. of you right now, they would back up. Yeah. They would back up. Why, why is that? And I don't, reflexively. I, I, I think there's a, 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 something related to invading somebody's personal space. Mm -hmm. You know, if I want to get in. Interesting. Then yeah. it's, it's a little, it is a little uncomfortable to be on this side of the camera and get in close on somebody. Yeah. I can remember that taking some getting used to but someone you love close up in beautiful light and that means turn the flash off these cameras have a built-in flash turn it off go put your subject next to a window or a doorway or you know where there's some soft light and get in close and people are going to say to you wow you are a good photographer i want people to have that experience i've seen some of your work and i think we're we're showing it uh, as part of this program some of the uh, photographs you've taken there are a couple where the lighting is it's just perfect and i was wondering whether it was natural like there's one of a young boy uh, blonde, a, a, blonde yeah hair. a silhouette that's my son and, yeah. that, uh, and it almost has a halo effect around it. is that natural lighting yes and it's in my garage Huh? So it's in my garage. The picture is? Yes. So I found in the trash, somebody's trash, a great big piece of black foam core. It's black. I set that outside, outside my garage, leaning against the car. So now I've got a black background. My son is sitting in a chair. He's profile. The, all the light is coming from outdoors 
and I'm standing in the garage looking out, and I fill the frame with his head, mm -hmm. and that's the halo effect. And he's no angel, by the way, but, <laughs> uh, but that, is, that was when he was much younger, and that is a great example, because I'm in my garage, it's natural light. These cameras, both of these cameras, digital cameras, love natural light. They love natural light. There are times when you will take a picture, and you'll look at the picture on your phone, and you'll say, this looks better than reality looks better than reality. Mm -hmm. That happens. Digital, cam digital cameras are electric. They amplify the image. They amplify it. And sometimes with editing, and your, you know, your listeners, if they have one of these, they've got some kind of built-in editing mm -hmm. pr function in their, in their it's, it's not so much an issue today because you store everything you shoot on yeah. your, your, your phone. But I know we have boxes at home. Yes filled with yes. photographs it's taken painful. around the world. Yes. We haven't been around the world, but it seemed yes. that way. Yes. In, in Europe and other places we've been, and they're in little envelopes and so on. Yes. I've never looked at them. What to do? Exactly, what do I do? Well, I'm gonna recommend a company in Pittsburgh called Forever Incorporated. This company- Forever Incorporated? It, it, it is, it is, yeah, they're called okay. Forever. Among, they will store your, your digital photographs online, that's another conversation, but they also have a, uh, uh, you have the option of having them, you can send all your, st all those and, cardboard and, boxes. And they digitize and, it. and they digitize all of it. Videos, stills, I mean, really anything. And they do the best job that Is, I know. Isn't that expensive? It's not, uh, they're not giving it away, but it's not as much money as you think it would be. It, and I mean, it's like your family heirlooms. I mean, because here's what's yeah. gonna happen. Here, here's what's gonna happen. But that pile of stuff, yeah, it's going to it's going to the city dump. I'm telling you. Yeah, right it now. is. I know. I know. I mean, nobody. You know, when you're gone, and your kids are all there at the funeral weekend or whatever is going to happen that I don't weekend. like to think about that. But it's going to happen. I mean, and I, know, I certainly don't want somebody to take. Okay, I, what do you what do you say to those people who take pictures of corpses? Oh well, oh here let me get. God. <laughs> but but you know where I was okay. going with yeah. this. Okay. Your kids are going to go. I can't deal with this. Yeah. I can't deal with the mess. You can't deal with it. So I, my recommendation would be send it to Forever Incorporated. Mm. Anyway, okay. But why doesn't oh, somebody? I, I, <clears throat> why doesn't Samsung or Canon, or whatever, come out with a device so I just feed? Maybe they exist. Well, you can. You it does. Feed it's the photo a in. That's a scanner. Yeah. yeah. It's, and I mean, it, if you want to do it, it goes, yourself, you can do it yourself. But it'll take forever. Well, you know. uh, if you've got four by six prints, there yeah. are stacking stackers oh, really? that go and, in just, and it's it feeds incredibly it. fast. Hmm. And you can even rent them. You can rent those scanners. I didn't I know mean, that. you could do it yourself. Uh -huh. Uh, you know, if you've got a picture you love, you can also photograph it. I mean, yes. you can, that's really all a scan is, yes. is a high resolution uh, yeah. photograph of your whatever it is. Um, you've come up with, uh, and I know you have your blog and so on, but you have come up with a, a, a list of tips, techniques. You mentioned one, keep it simple. Lighting is most important. Find somebody uh, you love. Okay, I was sitting on one of those Day in the Life books, A Day in the Life of Italy. We're in Italy. I'm in a bar with 12 photographers from around the world. Harry's? Harry's? In Venice? No. No. <laughs> no wrong no, bar. Wrong, wrong bar. city. I think it was Luigi's. Luigi's. And um, 12 guys. One of them was a Pulitzer Prize winner. One of them was an Academy Award winner. I t I, they're drinking. I said, you guys, can you do me a favor? Can you give me two minutes? Just go around and what is your, like... Just give me some advice to say to amateur photographers because mm -hmm. these guys are heavy hitters And it was all the same stuff that I just said to you get closer look for beautiful light But another thing that they said that amateurs don't do and will change completely change your photography is look for simple backgrounds I can hardly bring myself to push the button if there's distractions in the backgrounds and this requires practice and uh, skill but it, if you can pull this off, keeping your backgrounds clean, you know. People show me, like, oh, look at this beautiful picture my, I shot of my baby, and I'd say, and oh, the light's beautiful and all. Too bad there's like a hot pink fluorescent, you yeah. know, garbage can sticking out of his head. But if you're in Rome, and you're in front of the Spanish steps, yes. and there's something wrong with, you stand there and I'll get a shot of you in front of the Spanish steps? There's nothing wrong so with that. So you're I love this it. No. big and the Spanish no. steps are that Oh, big. well, there's, here, here's what I do in that situation. The first thing, I, st I stand back and I get this, the Spanish steps all right. squared up. And, you know, here's right. how I'm gonna photograph, because you can't move right. the Spanish steps. But you can move the person who's gonna stand in front of the Spanish mm -hmm. steps. So then I have them get much closer to the camera. Uh -huh. So they're like waist up 
with the Spanish steps behind them. Right. And then you have the best of both worlds. And you're, you're absolutely right. I mean, I've seen people like go stand back next to the Eiffel Tower. They're this tall in the yes, photo. You know, exactly. That doesn't work too well. What about selfies? One of the keys with selfies is, I say, one of my standard rules is I say, get the camera higher than the, tall, the nose of the tallest person in the picture. Mm -hmm. Don't have the camera down here to shoot a selfie because sometimes it's not flattering, if you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. And uh, so don't do that. Um, these cameras have self timers built into them. You yeah. can push the button in, but you'll see a countdown on the screen. And, yeah. and, and yeah. that is very helpful. Well, I've learned a lot. Thank it's you. been delightful. Thank you. Uh, you. You are a good teacher, and you Thank seem you. to have fun. I do. And if you have fun, the, the people who work with you and benefit from your experience will have fun as well. Thanks. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. My pleasure. My guest today has been Nick Kelch, who is a professional photographer uh, and a lot of other things. He is a teacher and author and really enjoys helping people get the most out of this little device. Until next time, take very good care of yourselves and be sure to take really good pictures.